Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natasha, if it is your first time here, and welcome to my kitchen. If you can't tell by my appearance here, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different on my channel. I'm gonna be baking some cookies today. So today, I'm gonna be baking macarons, and I'll put a picture of them on the screen. A lot of people call them macaroons, but that's actually not what they're called. They're called macarons from my research, from what I understand. And they are this really pretty, they come in all different colors, French cookie. So it's basically two cookies sandwiched with some frosting in between. And it's like crispy and chewy and they're delicious. They're one of my favorite cookies, but I've never made them before because from what I know and from what I've seen on like YouTube and what I've read, they're pretty hard to make and they are very low ingredient. I think there's only like four or five ingredients. But it's like the process of the recipe is really hard because you have to like make a meringue and you have to like do all these things. So I really wanted to make them. I thought it was the perfect time because Thanksgiving is in a few days. So if they're really good, I'll bring them for Thanksgiving. And if they suck, well, I'll just throw them away. <laughs> um, but that's what we're doing today. We're going to make some macarons. So firstly, let me kind of show you like what the ingredients are. So you're going to need almond flour. Powdered sugar or confectioner sugar, it's the same thing, but they have two different names. <laughs> um, granulated sugar and eggs, egg whites. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, the first thing that I need to do for the recipe is weigh out all of my dry ingredients and sift my dry ingredients. So I actually bought a food scale from Amazon, just like a cheapo little food scale because I have literally been on YouTube watching videos for the past like two weeks getting ready for this just to figure out how to make it because it's all in like the technique. And from what I understand, more often than not, they come out better if you get a food scale because you need it to be like really precise in how much ingredients you're using. So I went ahead and got this food scale. So the first thing you need to do is you need to weigh out your powdered sugar and your almond flour and your salt all together and then you gotta sift them to kind of get out any chunks and I think like aerate it a little bit. So that's what we're gonna do first. I'm gonna try to like flip the camera a little bit because the setup I got now, you can't really like see my counter. So you're gonna go in between seeing my beautiful face and seeing my counter and what I'm doing here. So wish me luck. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and just keep in store if you wanna see whether or not I can nail this recipe. Okay guys, welcome to my kitchen counter. This is about as good as an angle you're gonna get, but that's fine because I am not a pastry chef. I am not a food channel. I will link below some of the videos I watched that were like really amazing and really good quality. This is just me trying to figure out in my kitchen. So first things first, I got my food scale. I'm gonna turn it on and then add my bowl and then zero that out. Okay, so we need to add the almond flour. 112 grams of almond flour. Twelve, okay. 112 grams of almond flour. 216 grams of confectioner sugar. That is so much sugar. 216 grams. Okay, so. And then three quarter teaspoons of fine salt. So now that I have all of my dried ingredients weighed out and in this bowl, I'm gonna take a fork and kind of just whisk it together. And then I have to go and sift the whole entire bowl of flour. Okay. I wonder if it would be better for me to like scoop it in here. I've never actually used a sifter before. 
OMG, it looks like snow. It's like a hand workout. So from what I've seen and I've heard, the reason why you want to slift the flour is because it helps give a really smooth top to these cookies. So if you've ever had one of these and based on pictures, they all have like a really smooth top on them, almost as if they're like glass or something. And so when you're sifting it, you're getting out all the chunks that would make it not have a smooth top. This is exhausting. This is going to take way longer than I thought it was going to take. Okay, so I think the sifter is like not working. It's like broken or something because it was coming out really fast in the beginning and now like nothing's coming out at all so I'm gonna try to use this like fine mesh uh, what is it called strainer or fine mesh strainer I guess but I saw in some videos people had like a really big one of these and they were using this to sift so I'm gonna see if this will work any better than the sifter because I still have like a lot to go and based on what my camera's been telling me I've been doing this for 12 minutes and it's just not cutting it so I'm gonna try this this could be dangerous Still like a bunch of flowers stuck in here. But I want it out. It's like holding all of my flower hostage. Oh, there we go. I'm struggling so hard with the sifting thing. I think I might have overloaded this sifter because when I was looking at it, I could see that it was just like jam packed at the bottom. So maybe none was coming out because of that. I don't know, but I don't want to like, there's still so much that isn't sifted that I'm like, that doesn't work with the recipe if I don't put it all in. So I'm really trying to get everything out. But as you can see, now it's coming out just fine. My wrists are literally, like my hands are literally so tired. I don't know how much longer I could do this. Okay. Just based on the sifting experience alone, I 100% understand why people say these cookies are like hard to make because legit took me just 25 minutes to get all of that sifted through first because i filled up the sifter too high and it just wasn't going through then i tried to use the other one and that wasn't working as good so then i went back to this one and i figured it out so this is what is left in the sifter you see just kind of like those little balls so based on everything i've red and i've watched that's completely normal you'll have like a few chunks that are left over and you don't want to add those in but let me show you this is what we're left with after the sifting so it does look based on appearance to me a lot more finer and a lot more aerated there isn't really any chunks in it anymore okay so i went ahead and cleaned everything out now is like the hard part where we have to make the meringue with the eggs and then add everything together and fold it up so i'm gonna like flip you guys again now that everything's cleaned up and we're gonna do the eggs okay so the first thing we actually have to do is weigh out some granulated sugar to add to the eggs and that's what like makes them ring so i'm just gonna go back in with my scale and zero out so we need 58 grams of granulated sugar okay 
Okay, so then I need three egg whites. But I'm gonna do like the, you know, the shell trick where you transfer it. Okay, so we have all of the egg whites in the bowl. They are room temperature. I said to have make sure your eggs were room temperature in the recipe. Apparently that makes for a better meringue. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start beating these eggs with my hand mixer until they start getting like kind of fluffy. And then you start adding a sugar like a little bit by a little bit until you get your meringue. And apparently when the meringue is done, you should be able to like flip the bowl over and none of it come out. So. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start just getting at the eggs. Okay, so here we are. They've just started to kind of like fluff up and get a bunch of air into it. I'm gonna slowly start adding just a little bit of the sugar by a little bit. Alright, so it's supposed to have stiff peaks when you pull the beaters out, it's not supposed to fall over like that, so I'm gonna do it just for a few more seconds. Getting closer. Closer. That was pretty good. Uh, I think I'm gonna do it for like maybe 10 more seconds and I think it'll be perfect. Do you see that, how they stayed? Ooh, I think we're perfect. Okay, okay, so I think our meringue is Ah! It didn't come out, I think I did it right. Okay, so I was able to flip the bowl over and nothing come out, now is like the hard part so I need to add all of these dry ingredients to this meringue and fold it over with this spatula really like not aggressive but not like too wimpy until it gets to like the perfect texture and supposedly the texture it's supposed to get to is gonna be good enough to where when I lift the spoon I can make a figure eight without the batter breaking so now I'm gonna add all of the dry mixture this is also the time for if you want to add food coloring at it but i didn't have any so we're just going with white i guess so how i saw him do it in the video was he added all of this on top evenly okay and then you just start folding it together now you want to get it to all mix in but you don't want to fold it too aggressively because you don't want to beat all of the air out of that meringue. I almost made that figure eight. I think we are almost there. I'm gonna try it again now. Nope, broke. So 
basically from everything I watched, it's said to just do like, once you get to this point, do a few folds and then try to make that figure eight. Do a few folds, try to make that figure eight because you don't want to over mix it. So you wanna be continuously trying to see if you can do that shape. My dough just keeps breaking. Yeah, okay. So now I'm gonna scoop all of it into this uh, pastry bag and then we'll be able to like pipe out the cookie shape on the sheet pan. would probably be way easier if you had someone to help. I need to clean up. This is a hot mess right now. Okay, we're back. So I have my baking sheet lined with the silicone mat. Based on everything I've watched, a silicone mat is the best way to get it without having your cookies stick all over it. I have my dough in my pastry bag, and I'm gonna start just kinda like, you know, dolloping it out on the pan. Okay, so after you put your cookies out, you know, you get your cookie dough out on the tray, what you need to do next is, and this part is like I'm most excited about, is you're supposed to like slam this on the counter on all four, like turn it all four ways and slam it on the counter because you wanna get any air out of it and you wanna get them to kinda level out. So I'm gonna go ahead and get to slamming. Okay, so now that I have beat these up against the counter and did all that, now you have to let them wait for 30 minutes to an hour just out on the counter until they build, like, they call it a skin over the top. So I should be able to take my finger and rub it over the top and it not affect the dough at all. It should just have, like, basically like a film. So I'm going to leave these out on the counter for about an hour. I'm also gonna preheat my oven and I'm gonna clean up everything. So I'm gonna leave these out, I'm gonna clean everything up and then we'll come back when it's time to put them in the oven. Okay, we're back. It has been one hour. It literally turned into a freaking storm outside. Like it is raining, the wind is blowing super hard. It's like dark and cloudy. So I'm having to use my house lights. So it's gonna look a little weird. It's gonna look a little yellow. It's gonna look a little retro, so been an hour I'm gonna test out the cookies and see if they got that like surface the film over the surface where it's like you know good to go to put in the oven and I have the oven preheated so you need to have your oven at 275 275 yeah you need to have your oven at 275 and then when you put them in the oven they go in for 16 to 19 minutes but you're not supposed to open the oven a whole bunch so I would wait probably about 16 minutes and then open it so let's check and see if I got the film on it all right, so here we are, let's. Oh yeah, it's totally ready, okay. Into the oven. We're already preheated. Here we go. Okay, so, let me be back around. I'm gonna set a timer on my phone. It is 1.40 right now, so we'll just set that for 16 minutes and then I'll check on them. Ah, so that's so exciting, we're getting so close. I'm feeling like really confident right now, but I guess the oven is like the true test of whether you messed up or not, obviously, because whether they come out. So after we bring them out of the oven, you have to let them cool and then we'll frost them. And then this is the crazy part to me. 
everything I've read and I've watched says that you can eat them right away but you should wait 24 hours to eat one because that's when it will like taste the best so I'm contemplating like should I try one tonight or should I just try one tomorrow or should I try one tonight and then try one tomorrow and see if it's really better maybe I'll do that hmm okay so timer's going we'll be back in like 15 minutes Okay, so I just pulled them out of the oven and I'm a little, I don't want to say I'm disappointed because I, I don't know yet, but I do know that they don't look right. <laughs> they don't look how they normally look. They smell really good, but they didn't really rise very much. And so I wonder if maybe um, I got too much of the air out of it, maybe when I was transferring it to the pastry bag or who knows what, but they didn't really like rise and lift very much like they're supposed to so i'm gonna let them cool for like 10 minutes take them off the tray move them to a cooling rack and then we'll like look at them a little bit more up close so here is what we're left with all of the shells here and they just have to cool a little bit more so the frosting doesn't melt and then i'll frost them and sandwich them and then we'll see i mean i don't think it's a complete fail but i think i definitely could do better Okay, so the cookies are completely cool now. I'm going to frost them. The weather is so weird today. It is sunny again right now. Like, it is, like, really sunny right now. Um, anyways, so the cookies are completely cooled. I'm going to frost them now. I just, I was going to originally make, like, a chocolate ganache, but then I was like, I can't deal with two disappointments today. Like, if I can't figure out how to make a ganache and my cookies also suck, like, Meh. So I just got this frosting just in case. This is um, Miss Jones. Okay, so I'm going to take just like a little dollop. Oh, I don't want to use that one first. So I'm just going to take like a little dollop. And then a cookie that's like equal size. Boom! Cute. Okay. I guess I'll have to do this one now. I already picked it up. I'll just fill that hole with frosting. <laughs> Man, I made them this one too big. Ooh, that one looks good. That one's the one that looks like most of besides the back. That's <laughs> the one that looks most of like what it's supposed to look like. I did all of that work for six macarons for six cookies oh my god I cannot believe I did all of that work for only six cookies okay so I have all of my cookies here six that's how much I got from like an all day's job of making these cookies huh I am not gonna eat one yet I'm gonna wait until at least Spencer gets home from work, which is like another hour. I think we'll try one tonight, like we'll split one, and then tomorrow, after 24 hours, I'll eat another one and I'll see how they are, because they look pretty good for my first try. I am not gonna lie. I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. Do I think I could do way better? Maybe. Um, am I gonna try again? Definitely. I definitely think I wanna try again, because now that I know how close I got them to looking good. I'm like, I want them to look perfect. So I'm going to let these just wait out. It says to put them in an air uh, sealed container and put them in the fridge. So that's what I'm going to do now until Spencer gets home from work. And then we'll probably try one. But they smell really, really good. They smell like, like Nila wafers, you know? Those are like bomb little vanilla cookies. Okay guys, so Spencer just got home and we decided that we're gonna try, oh my God, my camera battery will be dying right now. We have to do this really fast. So we're gonna try one of the cookies right now and then we'll try one tomorrow to see if it's any better, so. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little crunchier than it's supposed to be. Well, that could be good for tomorrow. That could be better tomorrow, though, yeah. Because the inside's nice and chewy. That's good. Yeah. What do you think? Mmm. Flavor? Phenomenal. Delicious. Agreed. 
texture of the middle part, perfect. A little bit crunchy on the outside. Yeah. But, I'll probably get it fixed in the fridge. Yeah. So, I think, so far, pretty impressed. It was just like a little crunchy. But the inside was nice and chewy, and the flavor was really good. So, we'll try it tomorrow and see if it's really that much better. Hey guys, I'm back. It's officially the next day, so it's been 24 hours, and we're gonna try this macaron again. I'm not gonna lie, we ate like half of them last night because they were tasty. I still think they were like a little too crunchy, but let's see after if 24 hours they really taste better or not. So here we go. It's not supposed to be crunchy. The flavor is there. The texture is so off. It is not supposed to be crunchy like that at all. It's supposed to be just like chewy and delicious. I mean, the flavor is so delicious and it doesn't really feel like taste burnt or anything. I think maybe I overbaked them or I don't know. I googled and it literally told me there was like 200 things that I could have done wrong. So I guess I'll just have to try it again. Whatever, I still think it's delicious. Even though it's a little crunchy. Well, that's it, that's my final taste test. I think they taste delicious, so I passed on that, but I failed on the final product because they're way too crunchy. They're not supposed to be crunchy like that at all. It is what it is. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know if you enjoy videos like this, if you enjoy videos where I'm cooking and failing at cooking um thank you again for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye